it's time to talk about Star Trek Starships once again. This time we have a fan favourite that is close to two iconic characters who are set to appear in Star Trek Picard very soon. Hey everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. The characters of William T. Riker and Deanna Troy are set to make a triumphant return to Star Trek after 18 years. According to the trailers for Star Trek Picard, it looks like they've retired and started a family. But when we last saw Riker in Star Trek Nemesis, he was about to begin his career as a Starfleet captain with his very own starship. It now looks like Trekkies will have some catching up to do. On today's installment of Star Trek Explained, we're going to be exploring Riker's first command, the USS Titan, its unique crew, and what might have happened to the Rikers during the time between Nemesis and the new series of Picard. Let's jump into this. We know essentially nothing about the USS Titan from Star Trek canon. It was mentioned in Star Trek Nemesis because Riker was set to take command of it at the end of that story. After the Enterprise stopped Shinzon and returned to Earth, Riker did indeed leave to take command with his new wife, Deanna Troy, accompanying him. We never actually got to see the ship itself, and because there was no more 24th century Star Trek shows or movie after that, we still haven't. Fun little fact, Jonathan Frakes, who portrays William Riker, once went to CBS to pitch a series about his adventures on the Titan to be called the Rikers in Space, but unfortunately it was never developed. If we actually want to learn more about the USS Titan and Riker's adventures, which we certainly do, we must step into the extended canon of the Star Trek universe. So let's go. Before we do dive into the extended canon of the ST universe, a quick disclaimer. We'll be talking about events post Star Trek Nemesis, but due to most of these events being written in books, there is a very high chance that the new series of Star Trek Picard will overwrite them. Anything we mention today should be used as a reference point and not a hard fact. Once Riker and Deanna Troy do appear in episode 7 of Picard later this week, we'll obviously get more information about what they've been up to. But in the meantime, kind of see this as a little guide. Captain Riker's adventures aboard the Titan were told as a series of novels, called Star Trek Titan, from which we can learn quite a bit about the ship and crew itself. The USS Titan was a lunar class starship, a science reconnaissance vessel less than half the size of the Enterprise E. Like the other ships of its class, it was named for one of the moons of the solar system, Titan, the moon of Saturn. The design for the starship actually came from a passionate Trekkie. In the real world, a contest was held to design the ship. The winning design by Sean Tarangu found its way into novel covers as well as the game Star Trek Online and more. In the Star Trek universe, however, it was designed by Chief Engineer Zin Rav Hareve, with cutting edge technology designed for Starfleet's return to exploration, signifying an end to the extended period of conflicts plaguing the Federation, including the devastating Dominion War. Titan's mission was to explore deep in the Beta Quadrant, further than any Starfleet vessel had ever gone. To accomplish this mission, Captain Riker decided to put together one of the most diverse crews ever seen in the history of Starfleet, with less than 15% of the crew being human. Besides himself, Commander Deanna Troy is the only major crew member he brought over from the Enterprise E, although Wesley Crusher briefly served as the Assistant Chief Engineer. For those Voyager fans you'll like this little detail, Commander Tuvok came over from the USS Voyager to serve as the Titan's Tactical Officer. The Chief Medical Officer, Shantai Vitsky's Ri, is from a carnivorous species that resembles the dinosaurs, known as the Pakwa Fan. They do prey on large mammals, so humans and other humanoids look like food to them. This can make it slightly uncomfortable to visit Ri as your doctor, but Ri is a professional and wouldn't actually eat anyone on the ship. A real professional bedside manner. That was a prime example of a challenge that comes with assembling the most diverse crew in Starfleet. Some crew, because of their biology, don't get along well. Among Titan's crew are carnivores like Ri who can only eat raw meat, and herbivorous species who are horrified by the sight of meat eating and see it as a threat towards them. This actually puts Starfleet's idealized diversity to the test, in a way we don't usually see it tested. But while there were some difficulties that arose, Titan's crew ultimately came together to perform their duties. Before beginning its mission into the Beta Quadrant, the USS Titan dealt with some of the political fallout after Shinzon's attempted takeover of the Romulan Star Empire in 2379, as seen in Star Trek Nemesis. During that mission, the ship was actually sucked completely outside the Milky Way galaxy into the small magnetic cloud, a satellite galaxy which orbits the Milky Way, making Titan the first ship in Starfleet to venture there. The aliens they encountered, called the Nile, turned out to be descended from humans who'd been swept there in a similar way centuries ago. However, now they are unrecognisable after years of genetic engineering. 
Finally, after they returned to their own galaxy, Titan was finally ready to begin their mission into the Deep Beta Quadrant. Here, they began to discover incredible forms of non-humanoid life. When they discovered more of the star jellies the USS Enterprise-D had discovered at Farpoint all those years ago, they began to piece together an understanding of the giant spacefaring life forms of various species encountered throughout all of the Star Trek series, which are now dubbed as Cosmozoans, and which exist as a part of a massive ecosystem spanning the galaxy. Some very science technical level stuff going on here. Among other discoveries, the Titan encountered a civilization of artificial intelligences, which nearly destroyed the ship. However, one of their kind helped the Titan to survive and join the crew, becoming the only artificial being on the ship and further fulfilling the ship's mission to have a truly diverse crew. Captain William T. Riker was very impressed at this achievement. In 2381, there was a massive Borg invasion of the Federation, as seen in the Star Trek Destiny trilogy. The USS Titan encountered the Kalar, a civilization centuries more advanced than the Federation. Because the Kalar did not want to be discovered by outsiders, they forced the Titan to stay on their planet. They were effectively imprisoned for the majority of the Borg invasion, in luxury, but desperate to return home to join the fight. Here they actually met Captain Enrique Hernandez, formerly of the NX-02 Columbia. Kept alive all this time by the Kalar. While she initially seemed loyal to the Kalar, she ultimately helped the Titan escape and went with them to use her Kalar powers to stop the Borg threat to the galaxy. You may be wondering how the Kalar and the NX-02 go hand in hand, we'll actually be exploring that in a video another time, so stay tuned for that. While their attempt to defeat the Borg was ultimately unsuccessful, it drew the Kalar's attention to the conflict and forced their hand. They now had to get involved in the Borg invasion, since in a sense, they had actually caused it. It turned out that the Borg had resulted from a Kalar colony gone horribly wrong. The Kalar discovered the Borg Collective and accepted all its drones into their own civilization. Those who refused were granted their freedom, so despite being kept from the majority of the conflict, the USS Titan and its crew played a pivotal role in ending it, and saving the Federation, if not the galaxy, from the Borg Collective. Following the events of Destiny, Titan became embroiled in a political fallout of a massive catastrophe, including the withdrawal of Andoria from the Federation, which caused turmoil among the ship's Andorian crew members as well as the rise of the Typhon Pact, an alliance of races that were rivals to the Federation. In September 2385, Captain William T. Riker was unexpectedly promoted to the rank of Rear Admiral without option to refuse. He then used that position to get to the bottom of the political events taking place within the Federation. Following the conclusion of these events, William Riker was able to retain the Titan as its flagship, while his former first officer, Christine Vale, became its new captain. The USS Titan's adventures would continue on in the Star Trek universe. So that's the history of the Starfleet Starship, the USS Titan, and our Captain William T. Riker. Take note, most of this information we've discussed today comes from extended Star Trek lore, and with a new show like Star Trek Picard taking place in 2399, it's most likely going to overwrite this written material if the ship and its adventures are mentioned inside of the show. As we've already seen with Picard, it is overwriting a lot of what the books have mentioned so far, but there's still room to include the Titan and its many adventures in the story if they choose so. Nonetheless, the crew of the Starship Titan have earned their place in the Star Trek mythos, as has the ship itself. I wouldn't be surprised if the Titan design, as well as some of the crew seen in the novels, do exist in some form in the new Star Trek lore. Either way, I really want to see it. The question remains now of how things play out in Star Trek Picard. It's unclear what the exact situation is with William T. Riker and Deanna Troy in the new series. The trailers show they've indeed started a family, which makes sense as the last time we saw them they had just gotten married, however they both appear in civilian clothing, apparently leading retired life. Whether they both actually have retired from Starfleet remains to be seen. Hopefully not, as I would love to see Jonathan Frakes back as William T. Riker in uniform once again. But we'll need to wait and see for episode 7 of Star Trek Picard. So that's a wrap on our Star Trek Explained video of the USS Titan. Hopefully you've learned more about the ship, its crew, and this era of Riker's life. Let us know in the comments what you think of Star Trek Titan, the ship itself, and whether you think the ship should appear in Star Trek Picard, or perhaps even in Lower Decks. If you want to keep up to date on all things of the latest Star Trek news lore and more, then make sure to subscribe to Trek Central here on YouTube. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates, or visit our website for weekly articles. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thank you for watching, and we'll of course see you next time.